Ron and Nancy Leesman live on 40 acres just west of town on the Long Prairie River. Here they grow a variety of fruits to make artisan wines, and from the wines make healthful herbal vinegars. Using herbs they have also grown in their garden. We started making vinegar because people are, there's so many things written about vinegar for health. And the vinegars that I found in the markets just don't make good food substitutes. So we start with fruit, we make wine, and then from the wine we make the vinegar, and we have the flavors of the fruits that follow all the way through, making it a very good vinegars. So we moved here in 1982 to this spot, and we have 40 acres. We planted an orchard shortly after we got the house built, and a garden, of course, and Ron had the thought of having pies. Well, he hasn't had too many pies. You can never have too many pies, but we had no intention of making wine or vinegar with the fruit that we were growing when we planted it. But as he got into making the vinegar, it's a natural to use the apples, plums, cherries, grapes, and rhubarb that we grow here. This is one of our apple trees. This was the Macintosh. It looks like we'll have a pretty good crop this year. This is among the first trees that ripen in the fall, so these will be ready in August. We have the grapes first. The second row is dwarf apples. Third row we have pie cherries, uh, kind of a bitter cherry, but it makes a very nice wine. And then the last row on the top are full-size apple trees. And then up in the woods beyond the orchard, a beekeeper keeps his bees, and we get the beeswax from him to seal our, our bottles of vinegar. So everything that goes into the wine and the vinegar comes from here, except we don't blow the glass bottles and we don't have cork trees. <laughs> And this is where the process all takes place. So we have over here rhubarb wine. We've been talking a little about rhubarb. We, this is in the second stage. The first stage, the fruit and everything is in the vat, and we've removed the pulp now. And it's locked in a jar with a cap on it that allows for the carbon dioxide that's being created to escape keeping the alcohol and the rest of the uh, things in the jar and preventing things that are in our air from getting into this and contaminating the wine. After this is completed, it will go through a couple of more times, what we call racking, where it will be taken, siphoned out of this jar and into another one. That will get rid of the pulp that settles to the bottom. And as that proceeds and this is nearly done working, then the wine will start clarifying the pulp will settle out. Once that's done, which can take anywhere from a month to three months, then I store the wine until we're ready to start making it into vinegar. So okay. the alcohol reaches about 15% alcohol, mm -hmm. and when he starts in the process of converting it to vinegar, he introduces a, a bacteria that actually converts the alcohol to acetic acid. So we're going from about 15% alcohol to about an 8% acetic acid when it's finished. Good. Okay, so after the uh, wine is completed, it's put into storage until I'm ready. When I'm ready, then it will be put into containers above and below here. We put in a vinegar starter or a mother and wine and the wine has the alcohol. Now the alcohol is required for the bacteria part of its life cycle. It changes the alcohol into acetic acid. And we have here a jar of the, the bacteria. We call that mother. And this, can, this process can take from six to eight months. The vinegars are bottled as a fruit vinegar, whatever the fruit is. As you can see up here we have plum, peach working. I have uh, many other varieties working. When they're completed, they're bottled as a fruit vinegar. Lavender over there. Lavender doesn't grow well in Minnesota. So, so we have chives here and, and chives have a, a pretty blossom. So when we make chive vinegar, the, if we have chives that are blooming, we get put one in the bottle and it looks attractive in the bottle. 
Uh, we made a chive lovage blend, so it's these chives and the lovage from right here blended together in a vinegar, which is a really nice salad one because it combines onion flavor with celery flavor. Um, over here we have what is actually uh, an unknown, some call it princess pine, but uh, it's not really an herb, though it has a milky sap in the stems that are, it's really bitter and, and it burns if you get it in your eyes. So. Yeah, so I should really get rid of that. And it, it planted itself down here. I had it up in the garden and it moved itself down here. Now I did have sage and thyme in here and I think that they've died out. That kind of happens, but I have sage up in, in the garden. When the fruits are done and we have herbs available, we make our herbal vinegars. We have things like basil, um, oregano, garlic. We even have a catnip currently. Now catnip is a vinegar that to a cat makes them kind of wild, but to a person it's actually supposed to be a calming agent. So if you want to put somebody into a little bit less of a position, you know, more quiet, give them a little catnip vinegar we say. But <clears throat> we have things like lovage. Uh, we also have some pepper vinegars that if you like pepper, and I and I do, and I, I eat quite a bit of it, but too many jalapenos, you know, it, it, you can't chew them all. So our vinegars, we have jalapeno, we have a serrano, which is even hotter, and we have a habanero, which is really hot. And yet, mixing these into a salad, you get the flavor, but you don't get, you know, a super burn that you would get if you were eating them directly. We are also a member of the Minnesota Grown Organization. We have the Minnesota Grown labels on vinegars that are completely produced here in Minnesota. The fruit was, was grown here, the herb was grown here, everything that's, that, that is used was grown here. Ron encourages visitors to taste as many of his herbal vinegars as they'd like to. So uh, vinegar is, is very flavorful, it takes very little to get the flavor. Now this is apple. Just touch your tongue to it? Just go ahead and drink that. It won't it won't hurt you. If you're not used to vinegar, it certainly is strong. Oh, I thought it was really mild. It wasn't it as is, strong as I th as yeah. was expecting it to be. It, it won't have the burning like you would get if you were trying to drink the vinegar off the store shelf. Right. White vinegar that's still. It's, it's a good flavor. strategy. Yeah. I ended up buying five different flavors on my visit. This is a cranberry. In the gift shop, visitors will find all kinds of items, including winemaking kits and accessories. Did I mention that Ron teaches winemaking classes? For more information about Leatherwood Vinegary, visit our website at lakescountry.tv.